Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna be testing out the Rattan LM750 bike. Now they make two versions of this bike. They make the LM750, which is the male version, and the LF750, which is the female version. I don't know why they call it that because I myself like riding step-throughs a lot, if you guys seen a lot of my other videos. So I wouldn't say a step-throughs for a female anymore, but anyway, that's the way they labeled them. Now they also make a 500 watt version of this bike in both the LM and the LF version that's about $200 cheaper. Currently, I believe this one's around $1,300 right now. So the other one would be around $1,100 for the 500 watt ones. But today we're gonna be doing a rad test on this bike, showing you guys what it can and can't do. It's gonna be a quicker video than what you're used to on my channel. Lately, they've been about 30 minutes long, but it's getting winter time here, getting cold out. So my videos are gonna be sh getting shorter, but I'm still gonna try to pack in the information that I think you guys should know if you were considering purchasing one of these and was wondering how it performed. Now, Rattan did send me this bike for testing and review purposes, but that is definitely not gonna prevent me from showing you guys how it performs and giving you guys some real world testing to let you or help you make an informed decision if you were thinking about one of these. So now let's get into some of the specs and details on this bike first, then we'll hop on it and see what it can do. So this bike comes with a 13 amp hour, 48 volt battery. There is no USB charge port on here like some of my other bikes with this style battery. And if you guys were wondering, uh, if you watched my hay bike review videos, this battery is not compatible with the hay bike. I already tried it. That's one thing I always try to see if my batteries are compatible, if they look the same and it is not compatible with the hay bike style, the bottom is a little bit different. So that 48 volt, 13 amp hour battery is powering the 750 watt motor in the back. And I gotta tell you guys, I put about six miles on this bike so far and it definitely has some pretty good power. I will be showing you guys that here in a few minutes going up some hills. Um, it's definitely producing over a thousand watts and it does have a nice reading on the screen to actually show you the wattage output and like i said it was producing over a thousand watts when i had a full charge on the battery so let's jump up here to the top real quick so over here you have the control pad just an up and down and then a mode button in the center for turning the bike on and off now you can hold the up and down to get into some of the display settings and there's a lot some settings in there that you can change however some of them are a little bit funny. You could change your PAS levels from zero to three, zero to five, or zero to nine, but it's a little bit funny the way it works. It doesn't work like it should. If you change it from one to three, your max speed's only gonna be about 15 miles per hour, which you'll see in my, in my test. If you change it to five, which is what it comes factory, I'll, I'll show you guys here what the max speed is. And then if you change it to nine, what's really odd is when you go from five, you're at max speed of the bike. And then when you go to PAS level six, the speed actually drops down to around PAS level two or something. It's really weird. And then it steps up as you go seven, eight, nine, but it still tops out the same speed. So not sure why they have it set like that or programmed like that. That is one thing they should fix in the future to give you actually a further range of different riding levels from zero all the way to nine on increments stepping up, not full at five and then go down for six and seven. So. That's just one thing I noticed, a little quirk about the bike. On the display, up top, you can see it has a battery meter starting at E going up. There is a lot of bars there, which is really nice instead of just giving you like four bars. Um, so that's a pretty good, you can see I'm probably at around 75% right now. Now, even though I only went about six miles, that was at pretty much full speed the whole time up and down some hills, testing it out. So that was putting a pretty good strain on that on that battery. We do have a set of hard rubber grips, which is the same as on the electric bikes. Coming over here to the right-hand side, we have a half twist grip throttle. Next to that, you have the seven speed Shimano thumb shifter, which leads down to the 14 to 28 freewheel in the back. And it's geared about right for the bike for the speed that it goes. And like I said, your 750 watt hub motor in the back. Now this hub motor does say I pass on it, and I took the controller out, checked it out. It says I pass on it too. I'm not exactly sure what that means. It's some kind of technology with the controller to help uh, you get more miles out of the bike. Now, whether that works or whether it don't work, I don't know. Maybe I could tell you guys in the future after riding the bike for a while. I almost had this confused with like a regenerative feature when I seen it listed as I pass. I thought, oh man, this bike has a regen feature. That's not the case. It doesn't have a regen feature. So just don't get that confused. When I heard that term, I thought it was like regen, but it's not. So keep that in mind, guys but it does have that technology 
like I said, whether it works or not, we'll find out maybe in the future. So coming up the chain here, we have a 52 tooth chain ring in the front, a set of pro wheel cranks, and a set of plastic folding pedals. Now these pedals do seem a little cheap. Uh, they, I mean, they, they will get the job done. They're pretty grippy, had no issues with that, and lightweight being that they're plastic, but they are plastic, so keep that in mind. Now we do have the folding latch here for folding the frame in half. Pretty similar to some of my other bikes. You have a locking mechanism here to lock that in for safety. They do have some mounts on the front that look like you might be able to attach a basket or a rack on the front. I haven't seen anything listed on their site for that, but maybe that's something that'll come out with in the future. So the wiring on this bike has a neoprene foam sleeve, which is pretty nice, covers the wires nice down to here. And the wiring throughout the rest of the bike is okay, it's not too bad. Um, you know, you do have the exposed wiring underneath. It's not inside the frame all the way back. I don't think they would have been able to do that with this design unless they came back out of the frame here with the wires, which probably wouldn't have looked good either. And on the other side of the frame, you have the wire that goes in the frame, but then it comes back out about seven or eight inches back. So is it really worth putting that one wire in the frame there and then taking it out there? I don't think it would have made much difference, but overall the wiring doesn't look too bad. I mean, it, there really wasn't much options you could have did with the wiring being that the battery is here so they did what they could do uh, not the best cleanest look but it's not bad up here on the front suspension it is pretty soft however there is no preload adjuster and there is no uh, hydraulic lockout or mechanical lockout on this side it's just is what it is and looks like i gotta tighten up that headlight i must have missed that but it's pretty soft and smooth but there is no adjustability there and you cannot lock it out now, most of the times with that being said, I don't really lock out any of my suspension because I ride a, a varying terrain. Very rarely am I putting a lot of effort into it where I want that suspension locked out, but just something to keep in mind, guys. So this bike is sitting on a set of 20 by four inch CST BFT fat tires. So that's nice. That will also give you some cushion if you keep the tire pressure down a little bit on those. And I forgot to mention, it does have a Shimano Turney TZ derailleur, which is pretty much entry level six speed derailleur. And one thing that I would have liked to have seen that this bike does not have is a derailleur guard. You guys could probably pick one of those up cheap if you were worried about it, but I feel like there's, it's always a good idea to have that derailleur guarded, especially if you're folding this bike up and putting it in back of your vehicle, it would have been nice to see. So one pretty cool feature is that this bike does come with a rear seat. However, it does say in the manual that it's not recommended to ride a passenger and I wouldn't recommend it either throwing your kids on there or anything because they could get their feet stuck in the wheel. Even though my son fit good on it, um, he was like, oh yeah, dad, you gotta ride me around. But I wouldn't, I don't feel um, safe enough to ride him around without his feet getting stuck in stuff like the chain or the wheel or spokes or something like that. So. Just keep that in mind guys it would have been nice to have a set of pegs on here but then it's kind of like promoting riding somebody so i'm not quite sure what this is for but it, it's a pretty cool feature overall to have just if you want to try to or whatever but it's better than not having it in my opinion the only thing that i would say is didn't do a really really good job of wrapping this fabric on here you could see some wrinkles around the corner it's not like it was a fitted fabric that they stapled on it pretty much just stretched a a flat sheet of fabric around here and probably stapled it underneath. It's not bad, but it's not the greatest. You could see a little bit right there around there how it's kind of didn't fold correctly. So uh, just a cheap seat, but like I said, not too bad. This seat is a little bit stiff, but it does come with a suspension seat post. So it does have a protector here, but being that this post was down in the frame, I think it actually came off the seat post here. I think it's supposed to be attached, but not that big of a deal but it is nice that they do include that suspension seat post to give you extra comfort there. The handlebars do have a safety mechanism here for unlatching the handlebars to fold those down. Another nice thing, this bike is sitting on a set of Tektro mechanical disc brakes, but it has 180 millimeter rotor in the front and a 160 millimeter rotor in the rear. Now it would have been nice to see 180 millimeter rotors in both the front and the rear. I don't know why they didn't do that because just like the electric, the new electric's out, that bolt for adjusting your rear pad is a little hard to get to. With a bigger rotor, it would have stuck that out further away and that would have been a little bit easier to get to. But with that being said, most of your stopping power comes from the front anyway. So that is nice that they did put at least 180 millimeter rotor on the front. That was a nice upgrade. 
The battery is easily removable. However, the seat does not flip up. So you do have to take the seat out to remove the battery. And when you guys get your bike, make sure that this battery sits flush down on here where it connects because my rail was off whenever I got the bike. The screw was actually, it probably got banged up in shipping. It was no big deal, but I had to take that screw out reattach that rail and make sure that rail was lined up so that this battery connected all the way. I've seen a few people say online that they were having issues with the bike turning on. That possibly might be your issue if that battery bracket is not all the way down and the battery's not seating all the way down on, these, on this mount here where it connects. The rear rack on this bike is really nice and heavy duty though. Uh, it's welded onto the bike so you can't remove the rack, but I'm not quite sure on the weight rating. If I can find it, I'll throw it up on the screen here but it's pretty cool that it's welded on because it's really nice and strong. A lot more beefy than the little rails that come down and just bolt with a bolt. However, if you wanted to take that off, you wouldn't be able to. I prefer to have the rack on because I always like carrying a bag with extra tools, camera gear, and things like that. We do have a pretty nice light on the front, not the super brightest. You'll see that in my speed test because I was riding at night. Now the tail light on the back is really nice and bright and it does actually get brighter when you pull the brake lever so it is a brake light so that's a really nice feature for safety there all right guys so before we lose daylight i'm going to jump on this thing we'll see what kind of power it has and my ride test that i did with the different speed levels in the pas levels it was dark when i did that last night so hopefully it's not too shaky for you guys but you should be able to see the miles per hour a little bit better we'll take it up some hills see what kind of power it has and hope it helps you make an informed decision if you were considering buying one i'll put links down below in the description to this bike and any coupon codes if i do get them so thanks for watching guys let's get into the testing don't forget to subscribe and make sure you guys check out my instagram i haven't been posting a lot on there lately but you can see previews and things of different bikes before I review them. And I got a couple new cool videos coming out here soon. So make sure you guys stick around. Whew. Almost forgot to mention this bike does come with a set of front and rear fenders. Would have been nice to see it come down further with a set of brackets to the front for stability, but might end up actually taking the front one off. The back one, however, is mounted on there really nice. It's They are both plastic. I kind of like plastic fenders because you don't have to worry about uh, them rusting out or rocks making them uh, be real noisy dinging and things like that the back one's mounted really well however it doesn't come down super far either it should be pretty good the way it flares out right here haven't tested it yet in the rain it did start to sprinkle on my ride test but wasn't wet enough to see if it actually worked really well or not now let's get into the ride test all right guys so we're over here testing out the speeds a little bit of night riding i hope this turns out well hope you guys can see everything you, you should be able to see the display and the screen a lot better so this is pas1 straight out of the box and the settings are turned all the way up just throttle is around eight to nine miles per hour and pedal assist is going to be pretty much the same so your throttle is limited to your pas level so whatever pas level you're in that's the max speed your throttle will get you up to Let's try two here with just pedal assist. And if you guys are new to e-bikes, pedal assist is basically a sensor that kicks on when you start spinning the pedals. It will kick your motor on automatically. So pedal assist two is 12 miles per hour with pedaling about 11 to 12 and just throttle is going to be about the same. Now this bike does have a cruise control. I'm not sure if you could turn it off yet i'll let you guys know if not i'll update it down in the description but once you hold the throttle for so many seconds it does stay on and to deactivate that you just pull a brake lever real quick or twist the throttle one more time and it will shut that off so like i said it does have cruise control i hope you could turn that off because i don't like that being on defaulted because it might uh, if you're new to e-bikes it might uh, kick on when you're not expecting it to and then when you release the throttle it's going to stay on but Worst case scenario, just pull the brakes and it will disable it. So let's try pedal assist three. Pedal assist three seems like it's gonna be about 15 miles per hour, 14 to 15. Okay, now let's try pedal assist four. Pedal assist four is 17 to 18 miles per hour. Throttle should be the same. And now five, which is gonna be the max speed. And this bike does pick up speed pretty quick, guys. 22 so 22 miles per hour is top speed 
and I'm 160 pounds. Now let's try just throttle only. 22. So the same with throttle or pedal assist, 22 miles per hour. I've hit 23 there slightly, but this is a just slight downhill there at the very end. So 22 miles per hour will be the top speed with either pedal assist or throttle. And one thing to note is I went into display and turned the P8 setting down to 20. You can supposedly change the speed in this bike. I turned it down to 20. It didn't make a difference. I was still able to reach 22 miles per hour. So no matter what setting your display is on, the bike is still going to be at those speeds as far as I know. Unless there's another setting that I need to go in and change. If I do figure that out, I will update down below in the comments or in the description of this video to let you guys know. So make sure you guys check out those comments and the description. I'll shut this other light out. I don't have it all the way on high because uh, this is the Shark 500 light that I use, but I'll turn it off real quick so you guys can see what kind of light the headlight on the bike produces. And it does produce a beam that kind of goes out on a V. It's more narrow towards the bike and it gets wider up at the further you go out. It's not a super bright headlight, We'll see down here on this back road where it's going to be completely dark. It should be a good test for the light. So this is about as bright as the light is. Pretty nice and wide. That's one good thing about it. It is wide. Um, I, I would prefer it to be a little brighter if I were riding at night to be able to see further. And there's the tail light. Really nice bright tail light. I do like that. And it gets brighter when you pull the brake lever. You can see there. And then this is with my Shark 500 light. So you can see that bright, brightens it up a lot. All right, guys, so we're gonna test it out on this hill with throttle only and see if we can come up it without any issues. Like I said, I've already gotten just over six miles on this battery charge. So I'm down on battery juice a little bit, but we'll see what it outputs and what kind of power it produces going up this hill with just throttle. Like I said, when I did this test the other night with a full charge, it was over a thousand watts. So we'll see if it continues to hold over a thousand watts. Eric E. Chipman just commented on my video. Thanks, Eric, if you're watching this one. <laughs> I'll stay in PAS5, which is the max uh, throttle. 976, 930. So it isn't outputting as many watts there it goes, 1,014 for a split second, 1,012. So it's, it's, it's peaking out over 1,000 watts. And like I said, it was 1,060 some, I believe, if I can remember correctly, when I was doing my test at night. It still pulled me up at no problem. Peaking at over 1,000 watts there for a short period of time. So this bike, I could say, definitely feels like a 750 watt bike for sure throttle only 20 miles per hour so i was hitting 22 like you guys seen earlier but maybe i had to pull the throttle and uh to disengage cruise control and pull it again i don't know we'll do some more testing here guys it's actually a little bit chilly out today so even though these brakes are mechanical disc brakes with that 180 millimeter rotor up front, it does have some pretty good stopping power. I haven't had any issues with brake squeal at all. The brakes were actually really pretty good out of the box. I had to adjust the back ones just slightly, but you guys can hear there that really no noise at all coming from the brakes. I believe that's the back brake, yep. That's the back brake alone. I could probably lock them up if I wanted to. Uh, the front probably works even better with the 180 millimeter rotor. So we're gonna take a pretty long ride up this long hill down here and see how it performs. All right, so I'm gonna pedal assist five. We're gonna just pedal. This is a fairly long hill, not super steep. I never really measured the grade on this one, but it, uh, like I said, this is just gonna be a test to see or show you basically what you can expect if you're riding on a road like this with your battery down about 75%. I like doing these tests. I normally like to do my hill tests with a full battery, but then also like to hit hills later on in the video to show you guys what you could expect once your battery level goes down a little bit. All 
better turn my lights on here. So cruising around 22 miles per hour and you can see it's still outputting about 90 some watts at that point. That was slightly downhill. Going back uphill now. So they say that this bike will do 26 I believe to 28 miles per hour I think or 26 to 27 miles per hour. I have not been able to get it up to that speed on level ground. Tried everything, tried increasing the speed in the display, decreasing the speed. That does not do anything when you increase or decrease the speed in there. That would have been nice if it would have. I reached out to them. They said to um, change the tire size to 24, which didn't make sense to me. So I did that. And the only thing that that did was change the uh, what the display showed, but it didn't actually change on GPS how fast the bike went. So you can expect right around 20 miles per hour, I would say, on an average ride with uh, s small to moderate hills somewhere around there like these hills here. But overall, guys, the power seems pretty good. Right now it's putting out 742 watts. The, the controller did not have an amperage reading on it. That would have been nice to see how many amps the controller was. I have no idea, but I mean, you could speculate and do the math if it was outputting over a thousand watts with a full charge at 54 volts, uh, what kind of amperage the controller is probably putting out. So this thing definitely has, or seems like it has more power than the electric bikes. I think the electrics uh, peak out at around 860 or so. So this bike uh, is not as fast as the electrics though. They, it, it is uh, slower. Electrics can go faster than 22 miles per hour. So let's take this side road here, a little bit off road and see how it does. GoPro, start recording. gravel a little bit of bumpiness <laughs> a lot of bumpiness this is hard one-handed guys better grab it with two all right so not too bad i feel like if i would have left the air out of my front tire a little bit that would help uh, a lot of these small little bumps it's definitely taking some of the bumps out with the suspension the front of this bike is pretty light guys because of where the battery is the battery sits behind the seat so the front of the bike is a lot lighter than the back let's do a little bit of throttle here a little bit uphill i gotta stop and fix my phone guys <laughs> It's rolling down. Must not have had it tight enough. All right, so they told me to change it to 24 for the tire size to get it to go faster than 22 miles per hour. I did that, it didn't work. When I started this trip, I reset both of these, the trip meter and, well, the trip meter resets when you shut the bike off and turn it back on. It does not hold the trip. Just like the electrics, that kind of sucks. I wish that would hold the trip value until, uh, you know, that, that way you could track full battery uh, performance but it's showing 2.29 miles on GPS, 2.6 on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower that tire size, hold the plus and negative button here to take you into the display menu. P01 is your uh, brightness of your display. Let's see if I can remember which one it is here without the manual. I believe it's, yeah, P06 is your tire size. So we're gonna bump that down to 22. You can't go, increments you can't go like 22 22 and a half or nothing it's either 20 22 or 24 but we'll go with 22 here and we'll reset the odometer on here and we'll see if that makes it a little bit more accurate one thing else nice about this display it's not really a black and white display it has a blue background and white uh, instead of being black and white it's blue and white so really nice i kind of like that the numbers are really big and easy to read on the display the wattage, your PAS levels, whatever you have them set at, mine set at five, mileage. You could uh, 
go through your trip, your time. Now the zero zero on the bottom, once you hit that, I was confused what that was. Reading the manual makes me believe maybe that's like an error code screen there, which will show you an error code, an error code if you have one. Zero zero, I believe is no error. Uh, so basically, yeah, odometer, trip, time, and error code. Not sure why they would display that, but anyway, uh, really like the display. Not as nice as some of my Keller displays, but definitely, in my opinion, a little bit nicer than the electric, especially since it will tell you your wattage. Now, I wish it would have gave you an option up here to tell you a percentage instead of a battery level on the, basically the bars here. However, it, at least they give you a lot of bars to be able to estimate your range. All right, guys, we're heading back up this bumpy hill, or bumpy road here. <laughs> and it might look a little shaky. That's probably because I'm one-handed. It probably would be better with two. I'm barely putting any effort in. It just hit 1,080 watts there for a split second. And I don't know if you guys can see, but you can see the suspension seat post working. Now don't think about riding this bike sitting back here, guys, because it is way too easy for the front end to come up when you're sitting back here like this. <laughs> All right, guys, so so far, the bike's been doing pretty good. I don't have a ton of miles on this bike. This is just my first ride impressions, and it does seem pretty good so far with the brakes, uh, with the power. It is lacking speed just slightly, but just keep in mind guys that 20 miles per hour is a class two e-bike, which is what is legal pretty much everywhere in the United States, but it would have been nice to be able to unlock this to go the faster speeds that they do state that this bike will do. That way, if you were off-road and things like that, you would be able to unlock it if you wanted to. This is the last long hill before my house. One thing I noticed too, if you're pedaling, and just using the pedal assist and then if you just hit the throttle a little bit sometimes it feels like it cuts the power to the motor not quite sure why it does that um, but if you just hold the throttle full then it's no issue at all really 11 miles per hour still pulling around 900 watts up this hill 986 i'm putting in minimal effort guys i'm i'm pedaling one-handed so i'm barely spinning spinning these pedals the motor doesn't sound like it's straining at all so still got pretty good power at around half a battery life and that may be down just slightly because i actually have a load on the bike all right guys let's try to go up this no problem right up that let's try again with not so much speed to start let's bump this down just in case start pretty much at a dead stop Now that struggled just slightly, but that was at a dead stop, and that is a pretty steep dirt hill right there. So not super long. If it was really long, oh, it sounds like I might have to adjust the back brakes now. Maybe something moved. Let's check out the grade on this hill real quick. All right, guys, so this dirt road, this little dirt hill is about 22, 23 degrees right there in the center there. I had to swerve, swerve over there to top just because that gets a little steeper there when I started a dead stop down below. But when I had a little bit of a run up at no problems. All right, guys, so it's getting cold, getting dark, and I'm going to call that a wrap. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please put it down below and I'll try to get to them. And it really helps my channel out when you do that, guys. So thanks a lot. I appreciate you guys watching. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button and stick around for more videos like this. I got a lot more videos coming. Hopefully I get a chance to ride on decent days like this. Um, if not, you guys are going to see some snow videos with me riding in the snow all bundled up and, and freezing my butt off. So <laughs> thanks for watching again, guys, and I will see you around on the next one. Whew.